Okay, any buddy. of Sempu's lineup. Madelon's Haven deck is amazing, okay? <laughs> All right. I'm Haven sorry. Haven. <laughs> it looks like Madelon. <laughs> Madelon's Haven deck uh. is next level, okay? All right, that's fair. That's fair. I, 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 I you know, I'm like, I'm like in Haven a lot more these days. I'm just saying <laughs> Sempu's bringing triple aggro lineup. Um, you know, he's got burn rune for the first game. He's got control or not control, but combo force for the second game. And those are generally pretty good against Haven. So we'll see. That'll kind of be like the tiebreaker for me. Like they look pretty even except for that Haven deck. Yeah, I'm gonna, How do you do? I'm gonna be on the same boat with you. Honestly, I can't disagree with that. But I believe in Madelon. Okay, it's got. It's got some interesting stuff in that Haven deck, but that's not going to matter <laughs> till next game, so. That's right. So this game we see Sempu with his Dirt Rune deck versus Matt Allen with his Aggro Bats deck uh, mm -hmm. with Karabas top end. So very, very straightforward matchup. We've definitely seen this before. Who do you think has an edge in this matchup? Envy, like, it's, have you played this matchup It's honestly kind of hard to say. Like, uh... Blood doesn't really use Vengeance in this deck. I don't think there is a single card, that, except maybe Dark General if you teched it in, that cares about Vengeance. Um, so, you know, giving giving Burn uh, Rune the, the freedom to just go at you and do whatever they want uh, kind of turns off Blood Wolf and Razor, Razor Claw in a sense. So it'll be interesting to see what happens here, I think. Absolutely. And I think that with the new expansion, actually, the new card, Starseer's Telescope, that got added to Dirt Rune, basically just mm -hmm. makes the deck function so much more smoothly. Um, it's a yeah. one play point amulet that has Earthrite. If you have something already in play, uh, another amulet, then it will pop that amulet. You will draw a card and get your play point back, so it keeps your tempo going. It also gets you closer to your Wizard of Bazas. It gets you closer to more burn. And Sempu is actually going really aggressive. He's playing three wow. demonic strikes in his deck. Three. So he's three. definitely he looking also to, just chose to end the game. Not even to kill Yorius with that with that Halo goal. I mean, he just actually goes face with it, takes the damage, and says, "I don't care. <laughs> I'm gonna push nope. you at 12 and pass." That's right. I'm the aggro player here, not you. <laughs> Deal with it. This is perfect. So we're going to see Ivania evolve here. And just, I imagine, just straight aggression here after trading. Blood doesn't really do much outside of just trying to go face as much as possible. So Sempu's idea is realistically, can I end the game before this Blood player can, can finish me off? Yeah, well, both players are, are basically, you know, can I end the game before they end the game right now? Right, right. Excellent draw, <laughs> though. Halo Gome's going to be great here. Perfect. And can evolve that and stick around after killing Avanya if he so chooses. Can clear the board too and not take any damage from Urias with that Halo Golem mm -hmm. if he's feeling like he needs to be a little bit more defensive now. But it's going to be hard to be defensive now. He kind of just went all in on the early turns. So being defensive yeah. now is going to be a little hard, especially with that Demonic Strike in hand. So we'll see what Sempo decides to do here. He's got a few choices. He did kind of commit, but uh, I don't know. He's not going to go for it. He might evolve Magic Illusionist into Avanya here. You're done for. <laughs> Make sure that bats can't do any extra damage, which we know would be dismal for Sempu if he didn't kill that Vanya with another Vanya and summon Bloodkin in hand from Matt Allen. Ooh, and unfortunate for him, the cauldron popped off the magic illusionist, but he drew Dance of Death, which is not something he can cast this turn, so he just floats two play points there. Mm-hmm. Not what you want to be doing in these very decidedly aggro matchups. Just not using your play points means you're probably not dealing as much damage as your opponent or putting as much board presence in play as your opponent. So definitely going to be a difficult game from from uh, from here for Sempu. Exactly. And Matt Allen's actually going to choose to clear out this Illusionist, which I love so much. You can actually trick it right there, summon itself to do an extra damage with Urius anyway. But uh, I love that he's getting rid of it. It's getting rid of so many options for Sempu. This might actually close the game completely. Yep, getting rid of all of the sigils that Sempu has access to means that Halo Golems don't trigger. It means, like, there's no Master Mage Levi coming down next turn to wipe the entire board. Mm -hmm. So very well played for Matt Allen here. Yeah, that's huge. Having no Earth sigils, this is just game right here, honestly. Like, mm -hmm. um, Demonic Strike and Halo Golem. Halo Golem a little less so because you can evolve it, but Demonic Strike itself is very, very play point inefficient. Wow. He's going, going face, face again. He's committed. <laughs> He's committed. Urius getting a ton of mileage this game. Urius is one of those cards that's really hard to play around, right? It's like, do I kill it early yeah. because it's only one damage on attack? But realistically, that thing sits around for two or three turns. It's dealing way more damage than your standard 2-2. Two -two. So, uh, very, very interesting. Yeah, it is definitely, definitely very cool. It's got a great stat line, too. Um, but with Evolve here... Evolve here and... 
the blood fed flower bed this yeah. will be game not choosing not to clear out the urius with the evolve last turn um probably a mistake but wouldn't have mattered much i don't think even on the aggressive side of things with the demonic strike and a dance of death in hand that senpu really had the tempo to kind of push the game where he wanted to fast enough Right, his hand was kind of clogged with the spells there. It was super unfortunate that when he when he popped the Witch's Cauldron, he drew a Dance of Death because he still had two play points left that turn. If he had drawn like maybe an extra Illusionist or maybe even like a Levi or something, that could have easily flipped uh, in in his favor. I think. Mm -hmm. Levi definitely one of those cards you want to see in pretty much every matchup with Burn Rune because yeah. it is <laughs> if you play the best Rune, you want to see target it, yeah. in the deck, right? <laughs> uh, all right, so now we get to see the Haven deck. This is the deck that I was talking about. Obviously, you have some feelings towards Haven. Um, but I think this this is kind of the linchpin. Seraph has two chances to win, so it's at its best right now. Um, it doesn't have to just go in against one game against Aggro to try to get the win. So we'll see if it can compete here. The one thing about Seraph, though, is that has, it's been like, I don't know about like historically, but kind of like always. Seraph, he does play Curate, but Seraph has kind of always been that deck where if I'm not really far ahead or mostly safe on eight, I can't even play Seraph. So... Uh, you know, it's it's kind of awkward. It's kind of hard these days to, to even be in a position where you can even cast it. So here's an interesting choice. In the Seraph Haven list that Matt Allen is presenting, he is playing three Sacred Pleas and three Globes. So he's playing like the full suite of one drops. What do you feel about that? Uh, I mean, he wants to find Seraph, and I think that's great. Another great thing in his deck is it's not going to matter too much against this, uh, but it might matter in the Forest matchup is Star Torrents, which is a great new card. Yes. Love Star Torrent. Star Torrent, uh, I believe, is quite a bit better than Sister Initiate in a lot of ways, um, mm -hmm. just because yeah. A, it removes counters from all of your amulets, so you just get a nice little push. Plus against, you know, PDK or Aggro Blood or any of these, like, you know, Aggro oh, Sword yeah. stuff that you might think to see, it can just clear the board while also presenting, like, faster Beast Calls, faster Sacred Pleas, faster Globes, and all that kind of stuff. So uh, also a very good addition from the new set. Mm -hmm. And then, I mean, outside of that, he's got some noises in here, but outside of that, his deck is extremely, <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> <laughs> extremely, like, uh, I guess, by the books kind of Seraph Haven. He's playing double Seraph, and, and again, yes. he's just going to try and hope that the board is, you know, stable enough that he can play Seraph. That's kind of the game plan of the entire deck, so. Did get an early Beast Call, so we'll have a little bit of tempo here next turn, which is always good. Nisha mm -hmm. or Na Noise? <laughs> noise. Um, noise. I don't. I don't really know how much mileage you can get out of that card against Rune specifically because all of their damaging spells generally deal three anyway. So Ooh, kind of a hard card to play. The the Ooh, I, I like that a lot. Okay. You kill the Levi too. Very nice like play. That. Right before the Evo turn. Mm -hmm. And actually, yeah, that that kind of like mitigated quite a bit of damage that Senpu could oh, have yeah. done. So, yeah, very good play. You're done for. Okay. Senpu deciding to clear board to make sure that Matt Allen has to answer this next turn. Can't just do some random card drawing things. Right, exactly. It's kind of how you have to, I mean, I keep, I keep hammering it in there, but it, you, you win against uh, Seraph Haven by pressuring the deck. If you let the deck um, keep the board neutral or keep the board slightly ahead, you will never beat Seraph unless you're playing Odin's or something, so... And what we see from Senpu's side of things actually right now is he's got a very slow hand. It will kick into like another notch once we get into the 6-7 play point area because that's when Wizardus turns on for the rest of the hand. But realistically, mm -hmm. everything in his hand is just super expensive right now. Very clunky. It just got clunkier with another Master Mage Levi. Right. <laughs> Generally what you want to see, but against Seraphaven, you just want to be getting damage in as fast and as early as possible. Right. And right there, like you said, I mean, no, all Noise did right there was cause him to take two damage. It was a target for Piercing Rune, so yep, exactly. <laughs> that's all it did. That's actually a huge point. So those of you not too familiar with Dirt Rune or those of you just getting into the game, Dirt Rune gets a lot of mileage out of their opponent's followers, which is kind of weird. Cards like Dance of Death, Piercing Rune, Mutagenic Bolt, all these cards require you, your opponent to have followers in play. So as a control deck, if you can kind of mitigate it, in such a way to where you actually trade your followers into your opponent's followers when you evolve and just empty your board of followers for their turn, they can't really get that extra damage in. So it can kind of give you some extra turns there. Exactly, exactly. Uh, and Matt Allen does have a great curate of all in this turn. You know, like, it's probably going to die anyway next turn to another Master Mage Levi, but I mean, I think we found out why he's playing, you know, the six one drop sweet. He doesn't have a Seraph in his hand. There's no right. option to even cast it next turn. That's right, and even with this glow popping, even after a Sacred Flea, like you said, just still doesn't have it. So yeah, for Seraph, it definitely makes sense, especially when you're running cards like Star Torrent and Healing Prayer, just things that can maximize mm -hmm. that card draw early. I really like it. 
Yeah, definitely. You have to, in order to win the game with a combo deck like Seraph, uh, you kind of have to actually draw the card that combos and kills them, so. And this might have actually been a safe-ish turn for Seraph, but... It would, it yeah. Happen. Sitting on a nice Just... 14 life. He, he actually could, yep. but... So, opting to go for the tempo play. I really like this play. This essentially just takes the board back over, heals him up again, and Matt Allen kind of getting to this place where his life total is very high. Ooh, interesting Hound play. Do you like that Hound play? Do you think he would have evolved? Yes, I was going to mention that. Yes. Uh, your opponent, Simpu, you know he plays Mutagenic Bolt, uh, and you may need the Evolve later to actually get the board back if they take it back. So, uh, because a Mutagenic Bolt could happen, I think that's, that's much better. Not evolving there. You don't get the ward on the dog, but... You know, they don't have Storm in this deck anyway, so... Right, exactly. It's all out-of-hand damage. And, realistically, that Wizardus is about to get turned on. So, like we said, he had a clunky hand, but we're getting to this phase of the game where Wizardus can start pushing into more Wizardus, can start pushing into exactly. multiple Demonic Strikes. So, if Matt Allen can't put an end game together here, he's going to have to really heavily rely on that second Curate, and then just kind of hope to win with an aggro strategy kind of here. Uh, so, not not the place you want to be in with Seraph, but can definitely win that way. You can, but I don't know. I was drawing up to five cards here. That would be insane. <laughs> yeah. Especially if we see something like a Mutagenic Bolt here off of the Wizardess. Oh, yeah. It's already casting Demonic Strike for one. Here we go. Draws three. Ooh, no spells. This So this kind of makes it an awkward turn. Yes. Yeah, finding Levi is pretty good here. And this is actually going to be very hard for Matt Allen to clear, especially with that Beast Call popping. Like, he's going to have to invest either all of his Beast Call into it, um, or he's just going to have to Themis his own Beast Call trigger away, which is never feels good. Yeah, never never feels good. Uh, it's also kind of, it's like a double-edged sword here with the killing the Oz. You kind of need to kill Oz, but you're not going to get manage any spells doing it, so. Right. And he can clear board again. here. But again, what else is he doing, right? He's just kind exactly, of sitting yes. there. Definitely playing into Senpu's game plan of just chaining into these Wizard of Sabazes. Much better chaining than Dario Volt, by the way. I really think that dumping your hand, getting all the card value you can into Wizardus is has been shown, at least in the last two seasons, to be far more potent than Dario. It is, yeah. It, it can be, definitely. Especially when you when you trigger into Mutagenic Bolt, which, speaking of, Ooh. very good draw. Now it's guaranteed. You just can cast it. And go face with, with Halo Golem. I like this. I like this. Not expending the Wizardess here. Getting as much damage as he can. I like this a lot. It's going to force a Themis. I'm fairly positive. And again, Matt Allen, he's playing double Seraph, by the way. I want to just reiterate that. As many turns as he goes without dropping it, he's playing double Seraph. And he still doesn't have one. <laughs> 22 mm -hmm. cards deep. So. I, I actually recommended this a few seasons ago in season one that if you're going to play Seraph in a tournament, generally I would recommend three because not drawing it literally means death, and death in a tournament style setting means you're out, right? Or in Ooh, this Matt case, it's going to be going to lose. Great. An amazing heads up play, honestly, keeping the rats, noticing he can put Simpu one lower than himself. Ooh. This could be flipped on him pretty easily, though. That <laughs> just was did. an insane actually, draw. Wow. That was an insane draw. So Carl, Carl giving the ability. Levi is incredible here. It goes oh, for us. Wow. <gasps> it's no spells. Did that just lose the game? I think it did, yes. Why would he yes. not go with the Master Mage there? Oh my goodness. Because Carl can put him at seven, but the rats, the rats put him back down to four. That's the game. And there's seven. no removal. Oh my gosh. No, Sepfu! So <laughs> wow. Killing death by your own rats? Oh my goodness, does that not feel good? It's, it's incredible. He had the clear. I have to know what he was searching for. Maybe he was searching he was for a three damage spell to, yeah. put, yeah. to put Matt Allen. If he had a, he had a bad spell, no, a three damage spell wouldn't be enough. It'd have to be a four damage spell. Yeah, he'd have to get two, two active spells off of that. So just like that, Matt Allen. Wow. Take it. Sepfu. <laughs> <laughs> the definition of double-edged sword. I thought you guys told <laughs> right. me there was no sword in this tournament. Oz well, I mean, has Oz the biggest has sword. sword in all of Shadowverse. Okay, yeah, Oz so holds let's just a giant that. sword. So, yeah. 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 yeah, that's true. Yeah. Actually, you got to that. see the uh, sword firsthand at PAX. Yeah, I got to hold it. I got to, you know, you know, cut down some carrots with it. It was